Today I'm going to show you how to add solar onto a golf cart. If you're new to this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. All main parts will be linked in the description and let's get started. The golf cart we'll be modifying is a Yamaha electric golf cart, which I previously made a video about building a battery pack for it, so check it out if you haven't already. I just got a large package delivered to my house. I wonder where that could be. It's the 200 watt solar panel I ordered for the golf cart. Now my initial plan was to mount it on top of the golf cart, but as you can see it does not have a roof, so we'll have to build one. To construct the roof I'll be using some half inch rebar. Now some of you might say that rebar is not that strong, which I fully agree with, but let me tell you that rebar is dirt cheap compared to steel tubing. Plus, with the right reinforcement it can be just as strong. Anyway, I started by measuring the golf cart frame, then cutting the rebar down to size. I also cut two pieces down to 5 feet to form a U shape. It's time to clamp it down and start welding. Using a corner clamp will help me get a perfect 90 degree angle. Now that this part of the frame is complete, we can position it in place before welding it onto the frame. I just welded on a second U-frame. This one though is 6 inches lower to let the rain and debris roll down to the back of the roof. Next, we'll measure the distance between the rebar and weld on some more steel to finish the frame. Since rebar can be very wobbly, we'll have to reinforce it. My theory here is that if it's under tension, it should provide better stability. So I welded a piece of rebar vertically, pushed it close to the frame, and then welded it together. Already the frame is looking way more stable than before. Now we'll just finish up the front reinforcement, and then move on to the roof. For the roof, I'll be using corrugated plastic roofing. I also got special brackets which are designed to make the roof more solid and easier to mount. To mount the roofing brackets, I screwed in a couple of steel screws before welding it onto the frame. Before installing the roofing, I'll place some brackets which the solar panel will later be mounted to. Now we'll clean up all the welds and rust with a wire brush and then start painting the frame to prevent future rust and make it look way better. Before screwing down the roofing, I created some slits for the brackets to fit through. We'll use self-tapping waterproof screws.
For efficient charging, we'll use a MPPT Step Up Solar Charge Controller. Now a Step Up Charge Controller is necessary in this case, since the solar panel only features a nominal voltage of 18 volts, while the charging voltage of this golf cart is at 58.8 volts. I'll be using some liquid electric tape to seal all the gaps. Next, we'll push the wires through the cable gland, lay down the solar panel, and then finally screw it down. The final thing to do is the wiring. While the solar panel came with connectors, I still had to chop it in order to get it to fit through the cable glands and replace it with XZ60 connectors. For the cable going to the battery, I'll be using some 18 gauge speaker cable and zip tie to the frame. Now we'll just hook up all the connectors. And we're done. Now this is a 14S lithium ion battery. If we wanted to fully charge it, we would have to set it to 58.8 volts. And if you are not planning to use it for more than a month, or you want to set it to 50%, we would have to set it to 50.4 volts. Anyway, the first test we'll be doing is to see how much power it can produce. To do that, I'll drive it under a sunny spot. There appears to be an input current of 1.28 amps from the solar panel at 21.5 volts, which equals to 27.5 watts of power, which is nowhere near the 200 watt rating on the solar panel. Well, I'm not shocked by the result, since my property is covered in trees. So I was forced to take the golf cart to a wide open field where the trees don't bother the sunlight. And right off the bat, we're getting an input of 144 watts coming from the solar panel, which is 72% of the rated wattage. Now that the golf cart is set up in a sunny spot, we can move on to testing the solar panel to see how long it will take to charge the golf cart. But before doing that, we're gonna have to drive around the golf cart in order to discharge its battery. After around half an hour, the golf cart is down to 15% state of charge, which means it's time to let the golf cart sit under the sun and see how long it takes to recharge it. Well, I had to stop the test after 4 hours since the sun already started to set. But that's okay, if we consider the fact that the battery went from 15% to 42% in 4 hours, then we're getting a charge rate of 6.75% per hour at full sunlight, which means it would take about 15 hours of sunlight to charge this battery from 0% to 100%. The final thing that I wanted to test was to see how much money I'm gonna save in the future. For that, I bought this power meter which doesn't just tell you the wattage consumption from the load, but also calculates the total cost. We'll begin by entering the price of 1 kilowatt hour in my area, then we'll hook up the charger to the battery and then simply plug in the charger's input into the meter. And as you can see, the meter's timer started right up. I should note that I discharged the battery down to 15% before starting this test. Now that it's fully charged, we can see that it took 6 hours and 25 minutes and it cost 14 cents which if we multiply that a year considering that it gets charged 3 times a week, then we get 150 cycles or a total savings of $21 a year. Now while $21 annual savings may seem like nothing, well it is, but just consider that once your golf cart is solar powered, you'll almost never have to charge it again. Therefore, saving a lot of time, which for most people equals to money. Well, if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell in order not to miss any of my new videos.